I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. It's such a pleasure to have you here with us in London. Maybe if you don't mind, just by kicking off, introducing the film, The Dead Don't Hurt. For people who don't know anything about it, what can they expect? The Dead Don't Hurt is a, is a Western that stars Vicky Creeps. You may know her from movies like The Phantom Thread or Corsage, extraordinary actress, and she does an amazing job in my humble opinion <laughs> in our movie fortunately she plays Vivienne who's our lead character which is somewhat unusual in a western to have a woman be the principal character but she carries it off and it's 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 a beautiful story and I noticed your um, second go stepping behind the camera um, after 2020's falling um, and that was I guess Lucy um, you know, interrogating some feelings you had about the passing of your mother. Um, and this one, I guess, started with an image of your mother, but it took a completely different um, tangent. So maybe we can talk about the genesis of the project and why this story for your second film. Yeah, Vivienne is inspired by at least the personality of my mother, uh, what I know about her childhood, my mother, but also, you know, primarily, obviously. Uh, her as an adult. She was a very strong-willed, independent woman, um, very curious about other people, other cultures, languages, loved to go to the movies. She took me to the movies when I was three or four for the first time, and all through her life we went to the movies, and she always talked about story, you know. She was, why do you suppose this happened, or why didn't that happen, or why did they resolve the, the movie in this way, why do you think? And we'd have these conversations. Um, I, uh, she was, I mean, I think in another lifetime she could have probably been a screenwriter or a director or both. Yeah, definitely. If it wasn't for her, I probably wouldn't even be in this business. She inspired that in me. And she inspired this character, Vivienne, who's very much like my mother. Vivienne is also a woman of her time. She's not a superhero. She's not going to get a gun and shoot all the bad guys. She's not the owner of a big ranch or the owner of a whorehouse. Uh, she's an ordinary woman. And I'm, I'm sure there were many women like that back then. It's just that those stories haven't been told. We wanted to tell it. <laughs> And what I find fascinating about the film is it takes so many of the trappings of the genre, you know, riding on horseback and the bar and, and the ranch, um, but you're completely flipping the script in terms of, you know, upturning the audience's expectations of who the protagonist is going to be, you know, focusing in, like you said, on this, like, female perspective. Did you always want to play with this genre? Had you grown up watching a lot of Westerns? Um, and what do you think uh, the impact is of kind of challenging those conventions in some ways? I mean, I didn't start out making, you know, writing the story from a, from a, I don't know, conceptual standpoint. I wasn't trying to make a political or ideological movie. I was just trying to tell a good story about a, about a woman about an extraordinary woman, and well, ordinary, but with a, an unusual courage and decency and sense of herself, right? It only became a Western as I was writing when I decided to place her in the 19th century, in the 1860s, on the Western frontier in North America, because I thought a woman who's independent and stubborn and very much her own person, she will face significant challenges if I put her on the western frontier, which is a place that's lawless and dominated by a few powerful, unscrupulous men who are prone to use violence to achieve their goals, right? That would just make things much more difficult for her, especially when she ends up on her own for a significant period of the story. And that happens because her partner, uh, Olson, the role I play, he decides to enlist in the Union uh, in the Civil War, even though he's not uh, native-born, like many did. Uh, many uh, foreigners decided to enlist, and for moral reasons, you know, uh, because they were against slavery or against secession, whatever, many reasons. And... Um, when he goes away, we don't do what you always do in movies historically, which is go to war with him. And that becomes the central part of the story. We stay with her. In fact, he rides out of a shot to go to war. We don't even pan the camera with him. We stay with her for a long time. And it's because I wanted to explore what happens to women, what happens to little girls. You also see in a flashback when Vivian is a little girl, her father goes off to fight uh, in a different war. 
Uh, he's, they're a uh, French-speaking family, and he's fighting against the English <laughs> at the time, 1830s, and he goes off and does not come back. I wanted to explore what happens to little girls when their dads go away like that. What happens to women like Vivienne when their partners go off to fight in their, you know, male wars? Uh, what happens to women in general when their sons or their brothers, you know, when, when their loved ones go off? What are the consequences physically, mentally, you know, emotionally? What do they get up to? What happens? What, what's, what's been happening? You know, because normally in a movie like this, you'd go to war with the guy and you'd come back sometime later, maybe years later, as happens in this movie. And uh, she's either dead, which is sad for him, or she's married someone else because too much time has passed. And that's unfortunate for him as well. Or she's there and embraces them tearfully and joyfully and they carry on. But I don't think that's very... Well, it's not the only thing that's happening. What, what, what has she been up to? What has she been doing <laughs> exactly? How did she survive and, and how difficult was it? You know. So we wanted to explore that, among other things. And even though it looks and feels like a classic Western, um, we are very careful with the historic details and also the diversity of the population, languages... It's kind of an immigrant story, really, and a, and a love story. And it just because they haven't told those stories about women uh, and about women on their own, it uh, doesn't mean you can't. Well, that's what we wanted to do, and we did it, you know. And coming to Vicky, I mean, she puts in such a phenomenal um, performance, and there's something, you know, so multi-layered about that character because, you know, she's she's feminine, but she has this real inner strength. Uh, and like you say, she's not necessarily the one uh, going into battle herself, but you can feel that she's very ahead of her time in the fact that she's, you know, sort of defying societal expectations just in the way she carries herself and the, and the, the way she behaves. Um, why was Vicky the, the absolute right person for this role? Well, she's shown in other movies. I had not met her, but when I finished the script, I wasn't writing it thinking of her or writing any character thinking of any actor in particular. But when I had the script in in a state which I thought, okay, it's good enough that I can now show it to other people. The first role I needed to cast was Vivian. She's the, the main character. And I thought of her because she has the qualities you're talking about, just seems to from the roles I've seen her play. It's not just that she's technically skilled and that she has a particular kind of beauty that lends itself to playing period pieces, but there's a naturalism and something that she transmits, which is really a gift, you know. Not everybody has that, no matter how technically skilled they are as actors. She has an incredible screen presence. She can transmit a lot of feeling, a lot of thought, in silence even, doing apparently nothing you can't take your eyes off or there's something always happening and you know you can write a character that has that those qualities but unless you cast you know, unless vicky creeps is playing this role you know you might not get everything you were hoping for and and with vicky it's it's everything that I imagined that Vivienne could be and and more I mean there's more layers to it she's more engaging she's more emotionally she affects you every her journey is is to me anyway captivating and you know what is a successful movie well you hope it makes some money so that they'll give you money to make another one you know obviously it's a business but but a success is telling a story that that is as good as what you hoped it would be or better in this case it's more not only her performance but everything all the actors in it really uh they gave me more than I'd hoped, you know, and, and it's a, I'm really happy with the story. So to me, it's a success already, regardless of what happens. Of course, I hope people like it, as they have in where it's come out already, France, recently in Spain, and, and just last week in the U.S. And I, all the all the encounters with audiences that we've had, Vicky and I, we've had uh, really great conversations. And people, first of all, if you've shown the movie and they've stayed through the credits and they're still sitting there when you're to have a conversation with them, that's already a success, I think. And that they're all raising their hands and they have questions or they have opinions that they want to share about the movie, that's, that's something's working. And, and that's really feels good. 
100%. Well, absolutely. Congratulations on the film. Because I think you see it both epic and moving and it just feels very unique. So um, congratulations on that. Really enjoyed presenting it here in London. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you.